Now what we've just learned about line integrals of electric potential around a loop summing to zero is one of the two fundamental laws that allows you to work out any conceivable circuit. These are Kirchhoff circuit laws. So I thought we might briefly talk about these. Let's say you have some complicated circuit like the one I've drawn here which has multiple branches. So you've got current that can go around here and around there. We've got a battery over there and a few resistors. How do you work out what's going to go on in a situation like this? Well, that's where Kirchhoff's two laws come in. We have some sort of current. So you've got a current, we'll call it I1 here, and then it's going to split up. Some of the current's going to go that way and some's going to go this way. How much in each direction? Well, let's just give it a name. Say I2 over there and I3. And I3 is going to come back over there. And you're going to get back I2 and I3 combined to give you I1 over there. But what are all these different currents in the situation? Well, that's where Kirchhoff's laws come in. Kirchhoff's first law is basically law of conservation of electrons. What it says is electrons don't fall into a black hole somewhere in their way around the circuit. The electrons don't jump off the wires, unless it's arcing or something like that. So the number of electrons into or out of any node must be conserved. So what that means is, say, all the electrons or the current coming in here must split over there and there. Now, of course, conventional current goes backwards compared to electrons, so what happens is the electrons are actually coming backwards, but let's ignore that for the moment. So Kirchhoff's current law, KCL, says that uh, if you add up all the currents going in and out of a loop like through a junction, it must sum to zero. So in this case, what that's telling us is we've got I1 coming in, and we've got I2 and I3 going out. So you've got minus I2 and minus I3 coming in equals zero. Or we rearrange it, I1 equals I2 plus I3, telling you the amount of current in equals the amount of current coming out. So that's pretty straightforward. And now we get Kirchhoff's voltage law. which is the one that comes from the line integrals you've just been doing. Now remember, if we do any closed loop anywhere at all, the voltages, the sum of the electric potential all around it, must equal zero. And that also works if that loop actually happens to be inside the wires of a circuit. So let's imagine we pick as our loop, our line integral, around here. As we go all the way around, we must come back to the same voltage we had at the beginning, which means that the sum of all the voltages around the loop must equal zero. So in this case, what's the voltage here? Well, we've got uh, the battery's adding a voltage of V. You've got a current flowing through a resistor, so the voltage is going to drop there. So it's going to come down by I1, R1. Um, then it's going to come through here. It's also going to drop. So it's going to come down by, in this case, I2, R2. And that's the voltage all the way around this loop. Must equal zero. But the cute thing about Kirchhoff's voltage law is it works for any loop. So as well as this loop, it could also work for this loop. So around there, we've got the voltages higher here than here. So we've got... R2, I2, and the voltage drops across this one, minus I3, R3 equals zero. So what we've had is we can add up the currents going into any junction, like this junction or that junction. We can take any loop in the circuit and add up the voltages around it. In that case, that gives us three equations with three unknowns, which you can solve and work out all the different currents here. You could also take bigger loops, like you could have the entire loop around the outside there if you like. That would also give you an equation which is actually equivalent to some sum of these two. So in principle, these will allow you to solve for any network of resistors and currents and batteries and light bulbs and something like that. You could have thousands of wires, something like a silicon chip with millions of circuits. And in principle, you just have lots and lots of simultaneous equations by applying Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's current law at every junction and every loop. And that will allow you to solve it. 
they'd better take a big computer if you want to do that in practice.